You think of all the great changes that have happened in life, in, in, in the world, everywhere. They've very seldom come from people um, in power. They've come from pressure on people in power. JME, obviously, Jamie Adenuga. I'm here today to speak to Jeremy Corbyn. First of all, what I would like to get from this is to get people to register to vote. That's my main goal. Before you vote, I want you to find out who you should be voting for and why you're voting for them. Have your reasons for why you're voting for someone, no matter who it is. What I've seen of him seems so genuine. It feels like I'm going to meet like one of my mum's friends. I don't know what it's going to be like, but hopefully it's just genuine and I can have a normal conversation with him. Hey, see. What's going on, man? And uh, lovely to see you. Uh, thank thanks you for, for coming me. along. No, thank you for having me, bro. Oh. Seriously. This is my local, there's like a, a vegan uh, Chinese over there that I go to. Are you vegan? Yeah. Okay. I'm up and down this road all the time, and it's weird because people shouting JME at me outside. I'm like, boy, they don't know who I'm going in to meet. But yeah, I'm a grandma artist. I make music in the UK, underground music in the UK. And What um, took you into that? DIY, just doing things myself. My parents are both Nigerian immigrants, came here, and everything we had was just like homemade and it kind of rubbed off onto us. My question to you is, what could, what would we notice? What would say young Kevin in Edmonton? What differences would he actually realize that would affect him directly if Labour and then you? Housing first. We've got a housing crisis in Britain. The uh, worst symptom of the housing crisis is the number of people sleeping on the streets. Yeah, but that's a symptom. That's not the whole story. That isn't the, yeah. And they're real problem is that we've got in the big cities, London, Birmingham and elsewhere, very expensive private rented accommodation. Working class families can't get council housing they're not of it, not enough of it. Yeah. The benefit cap comes in, they get forced to move out. So you get a kind of social chain reaction. Social cleansing, chain yeah. reaction. And uh, many are put off going into higher education because the debts are going to be too great. I know and that, that first hand as well. You know that first hand. And other countries don't see it that way because if somebody goes, into, goes to university and gets a huge debt, well, obviously they've got that debt burden, mm. but also they're put off going there. If talented young people don't go to university, and then where are tomorrow's engineers and doctors going to come from? And we all lose out. Yeah. I mean, we're talking a lot about your music and music and yeah. innovation. Yeah. But it's also about giving people that space to be creative and that political space to be creative as well. In government, I would want to measure our success or otherwise by the reduction in the number of homeless people, by the living standards of the poorest, by the opportunities of children growing up in the poorest households. So we actually say, listen, you've all got the same chance. Where you grew up in Tottenham, yeah. if you had a, an appeal letter to the parents saying, the school's hard up, give us some money. The parents love the school, love the kids, of course they do, but they're not going to have much money to give, give they haven't yeah. got a lot of money. Of course not. Whereas if you did the same thing in a wealthy part of the country, parents go, oh, that's okay, I'll give them £100 a month. Yeah. And so what happens five years down the line? The poorer the schools end up. Poorer schools, got fewer teachers, fewer assistants, less equipment, possibly sold off some of its land, yeah. schools elsewhere, doing, that just makes inequality worse. It's up to us to make sure that money is directed where it's needed. Why do you think people vote conservative? Why do people vote conservative? Um, they probably have a view that somehow or other they are going to be, uh, their status or whatever is going to be protected. We're after making sure there's opportunities for everybody. And uh, I would hope people would understand that what we're trying to do is fairness and rebalancing things. Um, seems to me all very obvious. Voter registration dropped off over many years, particularly amongst young people. In the last election, less than half of under 25s voted who were eligible to vote. Yeah. I want it to be much, much higher. I don't want people to participate. I think but one thing that I want to make sure I do say, is that I've never voted before, ever, ever. I've grown up like making the best out of what I've got. Yeah. And being optimistic with what I've got. We feel, when I say we, I'm talking for anyone that I feel, hopefully people like me that's never voted. We feel like no matter what happens, we're going to have to make the best of that situation. So sometimes we feel like, oh, 
don't need to vote. Like, it doesn't matter. Whoever, like, no one has our best interests at heart anyway. So whatever happens, we're going to still struggle. We're still going to grind. We're still going to come through and flourish at the end, you know? Whereas now, we start, we seem to be seeing someone that we can actually trust. Someone that's a bit, someone that's human. I don't know, like, every... Who, who was, who? Well, political change doesn't always come from politicians, does it? Of course not. And it comes I, from everybody yeah, else. Yeah, and, and, and I also know that a politician can't click his fingers or her fingers and everything they say, they hope for, just happens. Like, if somebody was to ask me why don't young people vote, I would say it's because they actually think that they, they won't, it won't make a difference. And they don't see any resonance of what they think and do yeah. uh, with a political system that's out of touch with them. With them, yeah. yeah. If I can do something really small that has a big change, I'll do it. Question for you. Why is it, do you reckon, that you're not popular within Labour itself? Well, the Labour Party changed its electoral system okay. so that the party members and supporters can vote for who the leader is, not the MPs. OK. And so, to be... Uh, when we lost the 2015 election, there was then a discussion about who the next leader would be. Oh, yeah. And um, uh, some of my friends um, put me forward, and we had to get the support of 35 Labour MPs to be nominated. In the party? In, in the parliamentary. At the time, it wasn't? Yeah. OK. And, uh, no, that was not to be elected, but to get on the ballot paper for to it. Be. And then um, I was given um, 200 to 1 against chance of being elected leader. Wow. Um, and then we started the campaign, and we just did um, public meetings and rallies all over the country. There was a, um, a challenge put up to me of, they said they wanted to have a different leader, and another leadership election was held last year, and um, I stood again, and won with even more votes. Again? Yeah, by even even bigger majority. And so, um, there are, there's a, actually a great deal of exaggeration by some media yeah. against I, like me. Yeah, like I said, I, this, yeah. is a, this, this is what I just heard. Yeah. In reality, there are half a million people who joined the Labour Party, and we've got a Labour candidate in every constituency, and we're absolutely on it to win this election. That means getting people registered to, to vote, vote. Yeah. particularly young people who are not registered, getting them to vote, and we're on it. Uh, all our policies will come out this week, but basically it's the lines I'm talking about. Yeah. It's about housing, it's about schools, it's about jobs, it's about opportunities, it's about cultural freedoms in our society. And now there's a chance yeah. for a bit of change, which I'm, I'm, I, I have to admit, I've never spoken about politics before. I haven't really ever told anyone to vote. In fact, I've even told people not to vote. I've said, there's no point, like I told you before. But this time around, I think there's a difference, and I hope, there, I hope something good can come of it. Thank you very much. I wanted to find out what change will we, would he, would, does he hope somebody like me will see? And he definitely said health service, education, things that are important. The main, main, main thing is to make sure people remember to register to vote. That's the most important thing. We both do it together. Together? Okay, cool. Say, I'm, Jeremy. I'm Jeremy. Make sure you get the red. I'm Jeremy. I'm Jeremy. Make, make sure you, you register, register to, to vote. vote. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> right. This is real, and there's a chance to make a change now, which is sick, if you don't mind me saying. So yeah, do your research, and um, yeah, know why you're voting for, who you're voting for, and then you can go and vote.